Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before God's presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord is God. It is God who has made us and not to be ourselves. We are God's people and the sheep of God's pasture. Enter into God's gates with thanksgiving and into God's courts with praise. Be thankful unto God and bless God's holy name. For the Lord is good. God's mercy is everlasting and God's truth endures to all generations. Won't you join me this morning as we pray, inviting God's presence amongst us? God, we thank you. We thank you, O oh God, for this day. We thank you, O oh God, for the clarion call to join you and enter into your presence, O oh God, with thanksgiving, to give you praise and glory and honor. And so, God, as you have invited us to join you, we invite you, O oh God, to manifest your presence in our midst. We invite you, O oh God, to do what you want to do, to speak how you want to speak, O oh God, to move how you want to move, O oh God. God, we invite you, O oh Lord, to turn our lives upside down, that we will not leave here like we came in Jesus' name. So, Lord, we pray that you have your way, O oh God. Do it now. Lord, we offer this with thanksgiving. We offer this as a humble invitation, praying, God, that you would forgive us of our sins, that we may worship you in spirit and in truth, nothing hindering us. This, God, is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. We invite you this morning to join us for our opening selection. This morning we will have our opening selection as a Jesus medley, and we will be led by our very own Happy McCoy Bristol. Oh, <laughs> 
thank God that that is indeed the kind of God that we serve. You can stand upon God's word, for God is always with us. Good morning, good morning, good morning, and welcome to worship here with us at Trinity. We are so very glad that you have joined us. We're glad that you chose this day to be with us, whether physically with us here in the sanctuary or joining us on Facebook or joining us on our call in line. We thank God for you. We thank God for you for our first time friends and family. If there are any amongst us, we invite you to let yourself, uh, to make yourself known if you would like to have a special greeting if you're here with us in the sanctuary or online. Um, we invite you to um, reveal yourself amongst us. Amen? Amen. See, none, we are family. Amen? It's good to see all of you. It has been a good week. The, the weather has broken. Hallelujah. It is warm. We are enjoying God's great sunshine. And so uh, we invite you to just enjoy worship as God leads you to enjoy worship, doing what God is leading you to do. Sing your song, clap your hands, pat your feet, run, jump, holler, hallelujah. However God leads you, do the holy rock, mm-hmm, the mm-hmm, whatever it is that God invites you to do, we invite you to worship God as God leads you to do so. For those of you who are worshiping with us, notice I did not say watching worship, but who are worshiping with us um, off-site, we invite you, if you're worshiping with us on Facebook, to like and love our post, to share it, to comment in the comment section. Say good morning. Let us know that you are here. Amen. Amen. Our announcements for today are as follows. Trinity Travelers are hosting our annual summer trip to Charleston, South Carolina, and to Savannah, Georgia, August the 14th through the 19th. We invite you to see any of our Trinity Travelers um, who are part of the Trinity Travelers Committee as soon as possible. Time is of the essence. You need to put your money down. No, no. You need to pay your money right now. Not put it down. At this point, it's like, okay, you need it all. Okay? No, yes, not yesterday. Not the day before. But like, we're talking about two days ago. Two weeks ago. But um, there's still there's still the time. We invite you, though. Make that known today. We invite you. We're very excited. This is our first trip since 2019-20. Um, 2019. Right? So in a few years. And so we're very excited about what God is doing in the life of Trinity. Our next food distribution will be on Wednesday, July the 5th, correct? Okay, yes. So July the 5th, 2 to 4 p.m. here at Trinity in our parking lot. We invite you to come and be a part um, to pick up food if you need food, to get food for others if you know others who need food. Um, that is certainly um, fine. And we invite you to do that because we want to be a blessing to you, to our community, to those who are in need. Our weekly prayers are held on Tuesdays at 7 o'clock p.m. and on Thursdays at 2 o'clock p.m. via our conference call line. That number is 202-926-1179 and the access code is 963-308-POUND. I invite you to come and pray with us. Stay as long as you need to. Um, if you can't stay the entire time, we're usually there about an hour, 45 minutes to an hour. If you can't stay the entire time, that's fine. Stay as you can. If you cannot physically connect with us, we invite you at the times when we're praying to stop and pray as well. That our prayers can join together corporately as we lift them up unto the Lord. Amen. Today kicks off our capital campaign. Woohoo! Yes, amen. Amen. You may start giving today, and I will say a little bit more during our um, offertory appeal. But today we are kicking off our capital campaign to raise the funds for our footbridge to repair it. Um, it's um, averaging seven. We're looking at seven thousand dollars, and we're inviting you to give abundantly, to give freely, um, above and beyond your tithes and your offerings. You're like, well, why are you saying that? Listen, Reverend, I only have a, I have a limited amount, and I understand that. If you have a limited amount. Give where you normally give. 
because we don't want to take from the operations of the church to fix the bridge. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yes. Say yes. Amen. 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 We're not robbing Peter to pay Paul. If you don't have Paul, just tell Paul you ain't got it okay. and give Peter his. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Um, today we celebrate our promotion Sunday with our special guest, um, Pastor Pierre Johnson, and I will introduce him formally. Um, a little bit later, but he is a friend of Trinity, and we thank God for him, and we thank God for his presence. We are just so ecstatic about hearing the word from God through this vessel of God. All right, those are all of our announcements. I have not forgotten, I did forget to put it on the liturgy, but for our enlightenment moment. I have not forgotten, but it's not just yet, but I want, I want to look at you, I have not forgotten. Okay, um, so we do have our enlightenment moment, um, and we're going to pass the peace of Christ, and after that, we're going to celebrate our June anniversaries and birthdays, graduations, whatever things you want to celebrate for June. Amen? Amen. All right, now, it is now time to pass the peace of Christ. We want you to, um, if you are um, listening on our conference call line or calling line, you may unmute yourself by pressing star six and sharing the peace of Christ with everyone. If you are um, worshiping with us online on Facebook, you may um, write your, your greetings in the chat to share the peace of Christ with one another. And if you are here in the sanctuary, I invite you this morning to stand to greet your neighbor. Um, we're going to do something different. You can even cross the aisle and say good morning, but don't go far, okay? Cross the aisle, say good morning, and then come back and just greet one another with the peace of Christ. Let us stand together. The peace of Christ be with you all. And also with you. Peace of Christ.
life, another year of life, and life more abundantly. Amen. Amen. We have passed the peace of Christ. We have celebrated our birthdays. We have given you our announcements for the week. And now we are inviting our very own Sister Brenda Burwell to come and to share with us our enlightenment moment for June. Good morning. Good morning. In keeping with the spirit of Father's Day, after Dr. Pastor Anita Wright delivered her wonderful sermon last week, this week's Enlightenment Moment will continue the praise and honor to Father's and Father Pinky. Fathers and their families 
march to the Brooklyn Museum, chanting, holding signs, and showing the importance of black father figures. This example expected to spring up in cities and states across the nation. How wonderful it would be to begin collaborating with the group to develop a dad game of Montclair, widening into a dad game of New Jersey. What a challenge that would be to me. Black fathers are and have always been strong, standing on the shoulders of their fathers and their father's fathers, enduring and surging through bondage, enslavement, political persecution, prejudice, violence, discrimination, inequities, since the days of their arrival upon this continent until present day. Yet, our black fathers remain strong, strong as their commitment to family love and the building of a new generation of fathers with their same courageous beliefs in freedom and morals. I end with scripture from Malachi 4, 6. He will turn the hearts of the fathers to their children and the hearts of the children to their fathers. To all the fathers and father figures in this congregation and beyond, we salute you. Amen.
We're thanking God and praising God for Mallory Gaines, who is well and on her way to recovery. We're thanking God for the power of prayer. And we're thanking God for the love, strength, and devotion of friendship. Praise reports. We're wishing a happy birthday to my mother, Jeanette Davis, who is um, 80 years old today. Um, praise report. Um, we're thanking God for Jeremy, who has finished middle school. Hallelujah. And is moving on to junior high seventh grade. So we are praising God for her. She has been recommended for the honors program. Praise God. Amen. We thank God for Corey Jr., who has successfully completed the Honors Institute at the high school and is moving on to his junior year. Oh, good Lord, where did the time go, right? Mm -hmm. And both, we're praising God for both Corey and Jeremy, who finished the school year on the honor roll. Amen. 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 Praise God for them both. Prayer requests, we're asking for continued prayers for guidance and for grace. Continue prayers for Corey Sr., Corey Jr., and Jeremy, Jeanette Davis, um, Mary Douglas, Urban Bell, Leanna, and, Sha and Shanae. Thank you. <laughs> Allison and Gabrielle, Anita Bush, Eleanor Forbes, Faith Frierson, Patricia Nicholson, Mita Barrow, the Davis family, Brene Stoddard, and baby Sierra and family. We're thanking God for answered prayers. Traveling mercies for Rosa and the Moss family, peace of Christ and healing for the Trinity, for Trinity City and shut-ins. Um, we're praying for God's grace to handle problems and, and illnesses. Oh, excuse me. Um, illnesses, special prayer of healing for Kathleen Moss and Quandora Nani, um, Quandora Nani, Bernie Walker, Aunt Helen, and all of Trinity City and to be sick and shut-in. We're asking God for, for God's continued guidance, asking for healing for our aunts, asking for healing of our hearts, our bodies, our minds, and our emotions. Thanking God for grace and for mercy. Thanking God for families and loving support. Lord, hear yeah, our uh, prayers. Yes. Amen. Here we go. We're good with, with fisheries now. All right. We are, our prayer requests from our um, Facebook feed are as follows. We're wishing and praising God for all June birthdays and, and those who are celebrating in our congregation, our family, and our friends. Thanking God for Miss Brenda and her enlightenment moment. We are praising God that by next week, um, Elder Michael Scott will be officially retired Elder Scott. Woo! Um, and we thank God for you. We are praising God for you, Elder Michael, and celebrating with you the ability to retire. Not everybody can, but we celebrate that. Amen? Amen. We are welcoming Pastor Kier Johnson. We're praying for those who have no one to pray for them, comforting those who are mourning, the brokenhearted, the heartbroken, excuse me, the discouraged and disillusioned. We're praying healing for those who are physically, mentally, and emotionally challenged, sustenance for the homeless veterans, um, for those who, not for homeless veterans, for the homeless comma for veterans, um, for those who are financially challenged, protection for the vulnerable, appropriate policing, military personnel, um, EMTs, firefighters, and all who stand in the gap between us and danger. We um, pray for appropriate housing for those who need different accommodations. We are asking prayers for barbers and cosmeticians who freely lend their services to special needs children, adults, and the homeless. We're celebrating God for Jeremy and Corey Jr. Um, and we are congratulating Grayson, who will be, um, who is being promoted to kindergarten for this fall. Y'all, we see all of these. We are going to officially celebrate our children. I promise you, in a few minutes, we're going to celebrate them, but we don't want to celebrate them before they come up from Sunday school. And then I see all of them. Like, listen, I think you forgot, Pastor. You said we're going to celebrate the kids today. I didn't. I promise you I didn't. Um, as much as my mind may be short, I did not forget that. I do want them to be present to hear our celebration. Amen. 
We're asking for prayers for 10-year-old Stein, who is in foster care and needs a loving and caring forever home. And so um, we want to lift up prayers for Sky. Um, and on that note, I do want to thank God for families who adopt, for families who foster, for families who step in the gap. Um, whether it is official or unofficial, whether you are that family member that is like, oh, okay, my mom couldn't raise me, so I, I live with grandma or auntie or whoever. Um, we thank God for you, for standing in the gap, for being there, and for parenting, for mothering, for fathering children into adulthood and teaching them the way that they should go. It's more than just a notion that it takes a village. It's more than just something that we say that's pithy and sounds wonderful, but it really means something when we come together to ensure that children have what they need, that they are cared for, and um, I thank God for those who who are able to step up and do that. Not everybody is able. And if you're not able, I don't want you to do that. I promise you, you're going to cause more harm than good. But for those who are able, I thank God for you. Amen. But not to overshadow, we still want to pray for Skye, um, that she will find her forever home. Amen. These are all the prayer requests that I see online. I will keep it open um, if, that if they are there and have not come in in real time, that they will continue to scroll in. We also want to lift up those who are on our prayer list. Um, Ms. Louise Groynton, Doreen Butler, Hazel Clark, Irene Tagala, Hazel Hassan Bay, Hyacinth Lofman, Helen Mack, Laverne Parrish, Bernice Paschel, Peggy Place, Joan Rembert, Bernie Walker, Lois Williams, um, for them, we pray. I also want to add um, the family of Mr. Grayson, as he has been put on hospice and um, maybe in the, in, we just want to pray for the family, amen? Um, making end of life decisions is not always easy, but we pray for families who are doing that, and for particularly at this point, the family of Mr. Grayson, we pray for him um, that when he transitions, however, and whenever God says that it is peaceful, and um, we pray for each and every one of us. Let us pray. Lord, we come to you this morning simply, God, to say thank you. Thank you, O oh God, for loving us and keeping us and watching over us, O oh God. For waking us after a, a, our, our night's slumber, oh God, and inviting us to enter into your presence, oh God. Lord, we say thank you. We thank you, oh God, for the clarion call that, that was not the trumpet's call, oh God, that called us into your presence. But God, that while we are yet in the land of the living, regardless of our physical condition, regardless of our financial condition, regardless of our spiritual condition, God, we say thank you because as the old saints used to say, you have allowed our golden moments to roll on just a little while longer. God, we say thank you, oh God, that you have allowed us to see this day, a day that we've not seen before and a day that we shall not see again. But God, we thank you for the presence the gift of this very moment. We thank you, O oh God, for giving us your graces and your mercies, for your compassions that do not fail, but they are renewed every morning. God, we thank you for your faithfulness to us, even when we have been faithless to you. God, we thank you, O oh God, that you have loved us and cared for us, even before we knew how to love you or to even call on you. Lord, we thank you. Thank you for Jesus Christ, your son. Thank you for sending us the Holy Spirit to lead us and guide us in all truths. And God, even in saying thank you, we thank you, oh God, that we can come to you with our praises and we can come to you with our petitions. We thank you, oh God, that we can cast all of our care on you, knowing, oh God, that you care for us. And we thank you, Lord, that we can just have a little talk with Jesus and tell him all about our troubles and uh, trusting and knowing that you will hear our even faintest cry and you will answer us in the here and now, in the by and by. God, we thank you. And so, Lord, we take you at your word and we bring our petitions to you on this morning, oh God. Our prayers and our petitions, oh God, for healing. We pray that you would do it right now in the name of Jesus. We pray, oh God, that if in your spirit, in your moment, in your will, it is not your will that we are healed ultimately right now, we pray for a cessation of pain just even as we speak to know that, yes, God, you heard me. And yes, God, I thank you. But as we think about it, as we touch our head, as we touch our shoulders, as we feel our hearts of God and, our, and the pains in our side, that in this moment, it has stopped just long enough for us to know, yes, God, you hear us. And so, God, we pray in faith for the ultimate healing. We pray in faith, oh God, 
of pain. We pray, oh God, in faith for you turning it around for us. We pray in faith for miraculous healing, oh God. We pray in faith, oh God, believing you for the seemingly impossible, for the illogical, for the improbable, for the things that the doctors have said you they can do no more. But God, we know that you are able. You are able, oh God, to do more than we're able to ask or even imagine. And so God, we thank you. We thank you in advance for healing. We thank you, oh God, for financial healing. We thank you, oh God, for spiritual healing. For the work has already been done at Calvary. Jesus has already paid it all. But God, we thank you that you will allow us to live long enough to prayerfully take a, a, a good decision to follow you, to accept the gift that you have given us through Jesus. God, we thank you for your grace and your mercy. We thank you, oh God, for your goodness and your faithfulness to us. We thank you, oh God, for loving us when we did not love you and when we could not love ourselves. We thank you, oh God. I pray now, oh God, for families that are mourning, that God, you would comfort them, that God, they would feel your presence all around them, even as they may be crying, even as they may be railing against you, but to still be able to say, but God, I don't fuss because I don't believe you're not there. I fuss because, God, I believe that you do hear me, and I've got questions that need to be answered. God, I believe that you do listen to me, and therefore I want to talk to you. God, I believe that you are on the throne, and that you are paying attention, and that you do care. And so, God, I need to ask you some stuff, because right now I am feeling what I feel. Lord, I thank you that you allow us to ask you what we ask you. I that is not one way, but it is mutual. We can talk and listen and have a dialogue. We can come together and reason together. And God, we know, even as you did with Job, that sometimes you just put us in our place. But God, the privilege of talking to you is still there. So God, we lay it all on the line. God, we come not only vulnerable, but we come open to you. Inviting you, oh God, to have your way in our lives. As, as for as much as we pray for your direction, we pray, oh God, that you have your way. That when you speak and we are aware of you speaking, that Lord, we will obey you. We will obey you in all things. God, we thank you today and we honor you. We honor you that God, even as we prepare to say amen, we already know it's done. We leave it at your feet. Our prayers for our children, our prayers for salvation for those that we love and we know, our prayers for our enemies, our frenemies, the saints and the aches, our prayers, oh God, to keep us even when we are tempted, oh God, to do the thing that we know is not of you. God, we thank you in advance and we bless you now. Lord, hear our prayer and answer us. This is my prayer offered with thanksgiving in the name of Jesus the Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Amen.
As I said earlier, it is also the day that we are kicking off our capital campaign. So I invite you today to give to our capital campaign as well. I invite you to share in your gifts, the monetary gifts. If you have ever used the footbridge to walk over it, I invite you to give. You know that that's personally for you. But even if you've never used it, I invite you to give simply because it's one of the things that needs to happen. Amen. Amen. It is a part of how we serve um, our, our congregation. But let's be real clear. It's also how we serve our community. Um, you may or may not know this. But every week, there are people who go across our footbridge, even in the state that it's in right now. Uh, we put we put cones over there. We put tape over there. We left the tree that came down in the storm right there so people couldn't cross it. And still, people were hopping the bridge because it is a shortcut. But nevertheless, we want to make sure that as stewards of God's gifts to us, the property that has been entrusted to us, that we care for that and that we repair that, that we make it as safe as possible, um, that we make it aesthetically pleasing and all of those things. How dare we live, um, as the Bible says, in houses that are paneled and the house of God be in disrepair. Amen. So we invite you today, not a guilt trip, but just an invitation to share in our giving. If you've not seen the bridge, go and look at it, sure. Um, but walk around the sidewalk and look at it from that way, amen? Don't hop the bridge today. Um, I promise you, we're not gonna be liable. We're not gonna be responsible. You have been warned, amen? amen. Praise the Lord. Um, but we invite you to give your tithes, your offering. We invite you to give to our capital campaign. If you're giving to the capital campaign, if you are a member and you have um, envelopes, there may be something that says capital campaign on it. It is a pink envelope, if I am correct. Is that correct? Okay. Um, but guess what, y'all? You don't have to have an envelope to give. Right? You can give um, via Givelify, and, and it creates a space for you to designate what you are giving to where. Um, you may write a check, and, and in your memo, you can designate what you are giving to where. Well, Reverend, do I have to write more than one check? Actually, you do not. If you just want to write one in the memo, let us know your giving number that is applicable to you and where, how much you want to go where. Okay? And we will make sure that it gets there. You may give through your banking institution's bill pay feature. You may give, um, if you are local, you may give um, by dropping it off at the church's van in the mailbox and, and, and at 5 High Street, Montclair, New Jersey. You may give by writing a check to um, Trinity Presbyterian Church, putting it in the mail and mailing it to um, Trinity Presbyterian Church, 5 High Street, Montclair, New Jersey, 07042. If you are physically in the building, you are invited to give. Miss Elsa, would you do me a favor? Would you bring our offering plate to the front? Typically, it's been in the back, and you can give as you leave. Um, but we're going to leave it right here at the front today. You may give um, um, your gift here. If you've not already given, you can bring it up to the front. Um, we don't have a formal way of giving. We don't march. Um, but you can also, before you leave, we invite you to leave your gift here. If you are going to give at the end of service, we invite you to leave your monies on your seat that you don't take Jesus' money back home with you. Amen. Amen. Um, no matter how you give me, we thank God for the gifts. Won't you pray with me as we receive the gifts that have been that are, that are being given and have been given? God, we thank you for the gift and the giver. We thank you, O oh God, for who you are and all that you've done for us. For God, we know that every good and every perfect gift comes from you. You, God, have given it all to us. But the earth is yours. The fullness thereof, the world and all of us who dwell in it, we all belong to you, O oh God. And so God, we just give that now to you, a portion of that which you have given to us. Help us, O oh God, to receive it and to be good stewards over it. Help us, O oh God, to be good stewards over that which remains. We thank you. Help us to manage it well. Not being frivolous, but also not being stingy. Opening our hands, O oh God, and, and adopting a, a spirit of abundance. God, we just bless you now. And we thank you for the privilege and the opportunity to give. This, O oh God, is our prayer. In Jesus Christ's name we pray, amen, amen, and amen. 
This time we're going to receive from our church school, after which we will receive from, um, are you doing the presentation for our youth? No? Got it. I got it. I'm on it. I got all I need. Praise the Lord. Amen. Then we'll have our, um, um, after our church school, we will honor and share um, about our youth. Amen. Grayson, we do. 
We thank God for our children. We thank God for um, for Danielle who completed her first year at um, the University of Penn State. Penn State. Penn State at the main campus, and we thank God for her. We thank God for her. Um, certainly. We thank God for Naya, Naya Whitson, who completed her first year of college at the University of Bridgeport at, in Connecticut. We are happy to say that while your first year of college is totally an adjustment, it takes a lot of getting used to, especially being away from your family or from your familiar surroundings, Naya did very well. While being a student athlete, she made the dean's list first semester and pushed herself even harder and made the president's list the second semester. Um, amen. She's really proud of both of these accomplishments. She is also looking forward to returning in the fall for her second year. Her major is psychology, and she plans on using that degree to become a sports psychologist. And so we're really excited about um, what our youth and our young adults are doing. We are excited about Ivana, who is now at, who's transferred now, and she's at Montclair State University, and she's typically here every week. She does our Zoom, she manages our Zoom call, and we thank God for her. Um, she's not been away at school, she's close by, and so she keeps coming. And we thank God for them. We thank God for all of our children, all of our youth. I am really just highlighting what I have. If your child accomplished something and I didn't say it, I promise you, don't get mad at me if you didn't send it to me. I did warn y'all last week. If I don't have it, I am not clairvoyant. I am God's servant. I am not God. Amen. Amen. I have insight. I don't have all knowledge. Praise the Lord. And so um, it is not too late. If there's something that you have accomplished, if there's something that your your baby, your grandbaby, your somebody has accomplished that you want us to know, you can share that. But we just want to celebrate our children, our youth, our young adults. We want to thank God for all that you have accomplished. And we want you to know that you always have your church family supporting you, behind you. Um, um, looking out for you, praying for you. Even when you don't see me, I'm praying for you. Even when you don't know it, I'm calling your name. Even when you don't um, imagine it, I am putting your names in rooms. I was talking to some random persons. They're not random, it was, but it was not anything to do with Trinity. This week or last week. And um, I mentioned you guys, not by name, because I understand not putting kids out there like that, but I mentioned the work that you're doing and how proud I am of you. Um, if nobody else tells you today, as Lizzo says, you're special. And I am proud of you, and I love you, and, and my heart cannot get any bigger if you were my own flesh and blood, but I thank God for you. And y'all know how I love my nieces and my nephews, um, but you guys, um, I count you as my children, I count you as part of my legacy, and I just thank God. For each of you. Amen. Amen. So on this day, we celebrate you. You're like, okay, if you celebrate me, where's my gift? Not in my hand, praise the Lord. Um, but it may be forthcoming. You know, I gotta, I gotta think, what do you want? Um, you're like, really? Because, you know, the, the thing is, the pastor gives Bibles, right? In my family, I'm that person when a baby is born, I buy tricycles. And I give um, Bibles, kids their first Bibles with their names engraved on them. And so that means, like, oh, the pastor's going really to give me another Bible. Um, I know for certain that you all have Bibles, so you don't need a Bible. So I have to figure out what is the appropriate thing to give you. And I don't want to just give you money, although that's always good, too. Mm -hmm. okay, listen. 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 Amen. Don't push me. Praise the Lord. But we celebrate you today, and so we celebrate our youth and young adults. We celebrate this promotion Sunday, and we celebrate all that you are and what you mean to us in the life of our church and our church family. Amen. Amen. It is now time for us to hear the introduction of our guest today. As I told you earlier, um, our guest preacher for today is Pastor Pierre Lamar Johnson. He is not a stranger to Trinity at all. And we thank God for him. And notice what I said. I didn't call him a guest speaker um, because I don't believe you're just speaking to me. I believe you are preaching. You are proclaiming the word of God. 
Our guest preacher is a nonprofit strategist, speaker, um, disability advocate, author, and faith leader. He has served in pastoral ministry since 2009 and has worked as a health and wellness professional since 2006. As a leader of, as a leader and growth ex expert, excuse me, he has been featured in various publications, including the Forbes, including Forbes and the New York Times. Since 2018, he has been the executive director of Rexel, which is a spirit-led, systems-driven team that helps leaders, nonprofits, and churches maximize every moment and excel according to the plan of God and their divine authenticity. In 2018, he was featured on the number one Billboard album, um, Open Heaven, by Miranda Curtis as the voice of the Open Heaven monologue. If you've not heard it, I invite you to listen to it. It is a powerful, powerful, powerful album, powerful song, but the introductory comments, the prologue um, by our very own Pastor Pierre how, was just so powerful. I'm not telling you to listen so you can be proud. I'm telling you to listen so you can be ministered to. Amen? Amen. Pierre resides in the New York metropolitan area with his son Aiden. He enjoys photography, running, sightseeing, and is currently preparing to release his 2023 book entitled Earth Fixer. And so after we've heard our sermonic selection, um, Your Grace and Mercy by um, our very own Kathy McCoy Bristol, the next speaking voice you will hear will be none other than that of Pastor Pierre Lamar Johnson. I invite you not to see the little boy that grew up in Montclair, <laughs> but to see the man of God who is bringing the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Oh, 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 oh,
Let me do it again. Good morning, Trinity. Good morning. You're going to have to leave with me and walk with me for a few moments. I just drank five shots of espresso, so if you were taking a nap like Rachel, you're about to wake up in Jesus' name. Amen. amen. Come on, say amen one more amen. time. Here. I'm grateful for my friend, the Reverend Dr. Anita Wright. I always makes me smile to say that. Uh, we met here some years ago after she had been installed as the pastor. And uh, this is my girl. This is my girl. I love her. I celebrate her. And uh, she is funny. If you have not uh, known this over the past several years, and I love a good laugh. Amen. Amen. Listen, this is going to be a quick train. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm thankful that she encouraged you, that Dr. Wright encouraged you not to see me as the little boy who grew up in Montclair, uh, because I'm going to push that envelope just for a few moments, okay? okay? okay. And you may not want to say amen, but if you cannot do that, then just go ahead and say ouch. <laughs> All right? All right? All right? Um, when we think about the state of uh, the world, the state of the church, and I normally pray before I start, but I know we've already been praying. And after Dr. Wright prayed, I said, who want to go on after that? <laughs> but when we think about it, consider the state of the church in the world, we see that we are living in desperate times. Mm -hmm. yes. I don't like to say that desperate times need and require desperate actions, but I believe that desperate times require intentional action. Mm -hmm. My paternal grandmother, Nessa Baskerville Johnson, uh, slipped into eternity uh, about a little over a month ago. She was a well-known historian, a storyteller, and she was the first African-American woman to be inducted into the Daughters of the Confederacy, or uh, also known as the Daughters of the American Revolution. There's so many things that she taught me over the years, but I remember it must have been maybe 13 years ago. I drove down to Richmond, Virginia, uh, and I don't know what I had to do there, but I called her up, and, uh, and she said, hey, Colin, she's a true Southern Belle, but watch out, because in, in the Johnson spirit, she got a mouth if you cross her the wrong way. And uh, she said, let's just walk around town. At the time, she was going through, I believe, her second round of chemo uh, for breast cancers. We were walking around town, uh, in downtown Richmond, in the historic area, and uh, of course she was a little cold, even though it was hot, and uh, her eyes were tearing. So walking around, we go into a shopping center, and uh, she has tissues, and she's wiping her face, and she's just loving taking me around town. We call her the Queen of Richmond. People are beeping and waving. She's loved by governors, both Republican and Democratic. So as we walk into this building, we walk up the stairs, and there's a store that we walk into, and this woman sees her wiping her eyes and patting her nose, and she says, oh, allergies. My grandmother said, no. She said, oh, is, is it cold? My grandmother said, no. And the lady said, well, what is it? And my polite, poised, classy grandmother threw up her hand and said, what difference does it make? We think about the state of this world as we celebrate our youth today. The purpose is to bridge the gap so that another generation does not rise up who does not know the Lord or the works that he has done. We have to consider all that we do how we do it. Identify the why behind the what so that the what and the how can get better. Perhaps eliminate everything that Jesus would not do. Hello, happy birthday. And ask the question, what difference does it make? What are we doing? What are we doing here? How unfortunate would it be that the next generation rises up and doesn't know how faithful God was yeah. to those yeah. who came before them. Mm -hmm. Different is okay. Diversity is all right. Don't get quiet. I told you it was going to be a little tough okay. one. Are you still with me? Yeah. yeah. But there must be unity. Mm -hmm. 
let me give you my points in case uh, I go off because of these espresso shots. There's got to be diversity and unity. Diversity and unity. And then a plan to sustain them both. Mm. This is Montclair, and we've heard about diversity since Jesus was a boy. However, if there is no unity, there is no victory in the diversity. Do you, if there is not unity, God does not get the glory in diversity. Now, I think oftentimes we think about and talk about diversity, we're just talking about uh, uh, racial uh, um, uh, status or uh, different cultures and uh, different nationalities. But I'm also pointing to different mindsets. Diversity means a variety. So it's called the ministry of both. Mm. If we want to bridge a gap between the generations that have come before and the generation that is to come, it's not one way or another. When we think about the fact that statistics say that within the next 15 to 20 years, the church will be completely irrelevant. Um. It didn't take COVID to close churches and to call for there to be a mass exodus uh -huh. from the Christian faith. And as a millennial, let me just say, don't blame it on us, because I know 65-year-olds, 70-year-olds, Italian evangelical leaders and believers who have also, quote, unquote, left the church. Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. There's something that needs to shift. Not that we want to become and be molded to and by the culture, but perhaps we need to wake up. Mm -hmm and see that there's something going on in God. Are there things that we are doing that's not really making a difference? It's not really making a difference. It's the ministry of both. Are we going to have black and white photos in our living rooms? Or in color? Both! You want paper or plastic at the path mark? Rest its soul. Both! I'm going to teach the kids how to write in cursive, which is basic for Yes. Yeah. And a pencil bow. Liberal or conservative, both. Mm -hmm. I'm going to welcome in U.S. citizens or immigrants, both. Mm -hmm. Are we going to welcome in just the straight or the queer, both? Are we going to teach financial literacy or just decree and declare that the windows of heaven will open and pour us out of blood? Both. Hello. Hello. Both. Yeah. Are we going to study the Old Testament or the New? Both. Absolutely. Are we going to have contemporary services or traditional? Both. Mm -hmm. Different is good and it's necessary. Let me paint the picture for you so that you don't think I'm just giving a TED talk. In Amos chapter 5, and I'll give you a brief description. Paint the picture of people who were, had given sacrifices to God and would worship God in their festivals and their feasts and religious services. They would worship God, they would honor God, but then get out in the wilderness and now worship and serve idols form these idols. Growing up in the church, you would do things, we would do things uh, as if this was going to uh, uh, make us better and uh, get into God's good graces as if there is something that we can do to make God love us more. Right. So I grew up in churches where the tie, I mean, they beat that thing in. <laughs> the tie. It was all about the tie. People would be running to the altar Dropping off their pocketbooks. And it's all about the time. So as I got older, in order for me to be good and to be accepted by God, I had to do things like that. Mm -hmm. Remember one time I thought I put a $5 bill in the offer, and boy, it was a 50 I almost lost my mind. <laughs> but here was the lesson. Here was the lesson. What was in my heart to do? Mm -hmm. Right. 
So here it was, the people of Israel, they're doing things in the presence of God to get themselves into the presence of God, but in their hearts, they were dead. Mm. In, they, in their hearts, they were doing other things filled with unrighteousness, filled with injustice. Mm. There was a lack of love, sexual immorality. But they were doing these things just to stay on, stay on God's good side. Amos chapter 5. I'm just going to read to you from the Message Bible. And I'll give you a couple more scriptures. If you're taking notes, it's so good. I, my prayer is that we will really turn this world upside down or right side up. I do believe that we've heard enough preaching and you've heard enough preaching to live holy for the rest of your lives. Hello. But it's interesting that we haven't expressed and it hasn't exuded from us enough love to not only turn the world right side up, but to turn our communities right side up. Oh, amen. Uh oh hello. Amen. In the chapter five, from the message Bible, I can't stand your religious meetings. Mm -hmm. I'm fed up with your conferences and your conventions. Come on now. I want nothing to do with your religion projects, your pretentious slogans and goals. I'm sick of your fundraising schemes. Now, that's not including that bridge. I ain't going to say that bridge. We're going to get that bridge fixed. Amen. Come on, say amen, somebody. Amen. amen. Y'all hear me online? We're going to fix that bridge in Jesus' name. Amen. The staple in the community. Yes. Amen. Yes. Sidebar, I was in Piscataway, New Jersey yesterday, and I was giving a tour of a property, and uh, there was a family, and I had no idea, they were from Montclair. I said, I'm speaking at Trinity tomorrow. And they said, that's the one, the church on the hill with the brain. <laughs> oh, amen. 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 So God ain't talking about the church on the hill right here, right? But I'm sick of your fundraising schemes, your public relations and image making. I've had all I can take of your noisy ego music. When was the last time you sang to me? Do you know what I want? I want justice, yes, yes. oceans of it. I want fairness, rivers of it. Come on. That's what I want. Mm -hmm. That's all I want. Right. When we look at all of our activities and the things that we do, I dare you to ask yourselves the question, what difference yes. does it make? Mm -hmm. Y'all remember when that brother was issued a threat from that woman by the name of Jezebel. Indeed. And the Bible said, because she said, by this time tomorrow, I'm going to do what you did. I'm going to do you what you did to the prophets. Uh -huh. The Bible says he went on a day's journey. Mm -hmm. Went on a day's journey. She said, by this time tomorrow, I'm going to do to you what you did to them. He went on a day's journey. A day later, he is hiding underneath a little tree. Mm -hmm. A juniper tree. Mm -hmm. It had already been a day. Now here he is running from something that was meant to be his promotion. Sidebar, don't run, run from a, a battle that God has meant to be your promotion. Ooh, so now here he is, a day later, she said, by this time tomorrow, mm -hmm. I'm going to have done to you what you did to the prophets mm -hmm. of Baal. A day later, here he is, hiding under a tree. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm going to preach myself happy real quick. Okay. A day later, when the threat was supposed to have manifested, here he is, mm -hmm. hiding under a tree. The question was then asked to him, hiding under a tree. What are you doing mm -hmm. here? Yeah. In other words, what difference does it make? See, sometimes we're avoiding things in the building, in the advancement of this Christian life in the world as we want to bridge the gap. We're avoiding addressing certain issues, certain topics. Uh-oh. Mm -hmm. We're avoiding them just out of a place of fear. Yeah. yeah. Just out of a place of fear. Out of a place of fear. But when we think about what's going on 
in Amos chapter uh, 5 and what was being addressed, it was really hypocrisy. It was hypocrisy. So let me hone in on this one uh, uh, point. At the end of the day, love is the only thing that matters. Mm -hmm. Sounds a little elementary, but I'm telling you, yeah. love is yeah. the only thing that matters. The version says that if you have not love, you can prophesy, sing, you can preach, yeah. you know scripture, but if you have not love, one version says you are nothing. Yeah, nothing. So when it is asked of millennials, when it is asked of baby boomers, why are you leaving the quote-unquote church? They say because the church has become something that Jesus never intended. Yeah. We talk about a God that is one of love and that Jesus died for all. Did he die for all or just the ones that you can empathize with? Did he die for all or just the ones that you understand? Did he die for all or just the ones who have the same appetite for you as you? Did he die for all? It's all, all. Listen, love covers a multitude of faults. Now that opens up a whole new can of worms because... Uh, you know, what do you identify as a fault? You know, you may see it as a fault that I can hardly fit into this little blazer, but I was too hot to wear a suit. But guess what? Love covers. It does. It doesn't mean that the faults are going to cease, but it just means that love covers. Love covers. So when people are leaving the church, they say, listen, it's because the God that has been taught to me I don't see it displayed in the church. There's a church that I was, you never know that I'm somebody's pop, pop deep down inside, so I'm going to try to not uh, have all these stories, but i got to tell you this one, because it really points to uh, the purpose of this message. There's a church that I was frequent, uh, frequently attending down in the DMV area, which was just last year, and uh, I went there and I loved the teaching I love the teaching and just the presence of God and the Spirit of God. And uh, the pastor's wife was speaking this one Sunday, and uh, and she started uh, talking about. She was speaking from Genesis, and she said this. She said, uh, "Well, I'm not going to tell you exactly." She started making fun of people in their use of their pronouns. Mm. You guys know what I'm talking about now. Yes, yes, okay, all right. So don't push the envelope, right? Because this is what is necessary. Right? So that another generation does not rise up and does not know the Lord or the works that he has done. And she started making fun of people and their use of their pronouns. I will tell you, I'm taught about the use of pronouns every day. I don't understand everything, but guess what? I'm seeking not to be understood, but I'm seeking to understand. That is the ministry of Jesus Christ. That is what makes the difference. And she started making fun of people and their pronouns, and I sat there, and at first I chuckled because the way she said it was so funny. But then just as quickly as I chuckled, I said, wait a minute. I said, I absolutely, the spirit quickened me. And I said, this ministry will not get another dime of my money. And I have not been back since. I have not been back since. God was addressing Israel. It was a tough word, but it was out of a place of love. Yeah. Knowing what could be. Knowing the diversity that needs to be embraced, oh, but knowing yes. that there also has to be unity. Here's one yes. more story. When I was pastoring a church in Montclair, not even 30 years old, I really had no business pastoring any sort of church before <laughs> 30, because I did not know who I was. But there would be people coming from all these churches all around New Jersey. And I remember one time a, a woman, she came in from a, a woman on Baptist church. Uh, in the area, and she said, well, I just came over because I need to see why are all these young people wanting to come to church? And so I thought it wasn't just the young people because it started with the young people. The young people started bringing the mamas, and the mamas started bringing the grandmamas, and then everybody was up in there together. But she said, I wonder why are all these young people coming to church? I need to see what's going on. And some of them came over. And this is not too much for the kids because if you think that this is too much for the kids, trust and believe that what I'm about to say, the kids can teach us more about. Um, and there was a rumor. They said, well, you know, Pastor Pierre, he's one of those lesbians in the church. I told you I'm going to push the arm. We were known as the lesbian church because there were so many <laughs> lesbian couples. And then we had some Pentecostal families who were joining. 
-hmm. And I remember that this one Pentecostal uh, family, this couple, they stopped me in the parking lot after they had been there for about a year. And they said, you know, Pastor Pierre, we came here, we didn't know who we were going to stay. Because mm -hmm. we got all these lesbians here. Mm -hmm. But you taught us about the love of God. That's it. And that we don't always have to agree with everyone, but though that is small potatoes compared to the love of God. Yes. Okay, go ahead yes. and say amen. Amen. <laughs> small potatoes. Mm -hmm. Other people would come over and they would talk about the different styles and people not wearing suits and they're wearing baseball caps to church and, and once again coming back to those lessons. And this old woman was talking about the lesbians. And I said, well, man, I said, do you believe that Jesus died on the cross, that he was buried and rose again? She said, yes. And I said, guess what? So do the lesbians. <laughs> Indeed. I said, mother, I said, you believe in the time? The time and the power of the time? She said, oh, yes. Bring all the time to the store house. They're going to be reading my eyes. And prove me not here to save the Lord of hosts. If you believe it's time, so do the lesbians. Yes. I'm going to stop right there before it gets too much for you. I'll let you get the point. Right. Absolutely. Different is okay. A variety of experiences. Mm -hmm. But unity is, this is what I told my son. I said, let me tell you what you believe. There was a virgin by the name of Mary. The Holy Spirit made a deposit. Gave son to a man by the name of Jesus. He walked the earth, performed miracles, died for you. Mm -hmm. Rose, and now you are seated with him in heavenly places at the yes, right hand of God. That's what you believe. Everything else, I don't really care about. If you want to discuss it, you're going to teach me some things. There are going to be some changes that take place. The other day, he called me dad instead of daddy, and I almost lost my mind. <laughs> But then yesterday, last night, we were on the phone. He called me daddy, and I said, praise the Lord. Both. Both. Yeah. It's the ministry of both. Diversity, but also unity. Mm -hmm. I think for, uh, I believe that diversity and inclusion experts have stopped using the term tolerance. Right. Right? I haven't heard that in a lot. Oh, yes, we love diversity, but we tolerate you. Mm. No. Mm -hmm. No. Just unity. Let's stop talking about what makes us different or what unifies us. The love of God. That's yes. It. Just yeah. the love of God. Just the love of God. Let me give you these scriptures and I'm going to give you my little stories. <laughs> First Corinthians chapter 12. If you're taking notes, 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Turn to your Bibles and take notes if you haven't say amen. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Let's see what the version of the Bible I read it from. Now concerning, now pertaining mm -hmm. to the gifts of the Spirit. I didn't even pull it up on my phone. I just, it's just written on the tablets of my heart. It says, now pertaining to the gifts of the Spirit. It says, I don't want you to be ignorant. Somebody say, we will not, we will be, not ignorant. be ignorant. Do you remember when Oprah Winfrey on her show, the Oprah Winfrey show, do you remember when she stood in front of her audience with that red suit on and said what? You get a car. Y'all remember? You get a car. You get a car. You get a car. Now pertaining to the gifts. Now pertaining to spiritual gifts. I do not want you to be ignorant. Somebody said there are many gifts. There are many gifts. There are many gifts. There are many gifts. All God's children. All God's children. Have gifts, gifts, gifts. Have gifts, gifts, gifts. There are different kinds of gifts. And I'm not going to covet. Uh, your gift and the anointing that comes from your gift. Why? Because I know that whenever I walk into a room, whenever I step onto the scene, whenever God has called me somewhere, I can't preach and pray like Dr. Wright. But guess what? I've got my own gifts. Yeah, yeah. Hello. Hello. Yeah, yeah. I may not be able to lead the choir like Sister Deidre, but i got my own gifts. I can sure run around in the spirit when I get happy. Oh, yeah, I can still run fast. I shock my son every time. <laughs> we all have gifts. First Corinthians chapter 12. Let me read it to you from the classic Amplified. Now about the spiritual gifts. The special endowments of supernatural energy. Oh, I hope you receive that. You've got supernatural energy. 
to help bridge the gap between former generations, past generations, and the generations to come. Supernatural energy. Brethren, I do not want you to be misinformed. Verse 4. Now there are distinctive varieties in distributions of endowments, gifts, extraordinary powers, distinguishing certain Christians due to the power of divine grace operating in their souls by the Holy Spirit. And they vary. Come on. They vary. But the Holy Spirit, here's the unity, remains the same. Miss mm -hmm. Marcellus, we got different gifts. But the Spirit remains the same. The Bible calls it light, precious, thick. I may not be able to crochet, but I sure can make a candle. <laughs> but now even when it's pertaining to spiritual things and spiritual gifts, they're they vary and they have been given to each and every one of us. There is a diversity, a diversity of ideas and thoughts. Now going back to Amos. Mm -hmm. Why are people leaving the church? Because there's a lack of love. And they're saying, Amen. but with, with the gifts that I have, with the talents that I have, with the experiences that I have, with the things that I've gone through. Are there open arms to welcome me in? Yeah. Sidebar, if there is not enough room at your table for both the prodigal and the Pharisee, both your God and your gospel are too small. Too small. Amen. Too small. Let me say it again. If there is not room at your table for both the prodigal and the Pharisee, both your gospel and your God are too small. It says in the New Testament that when the gospel is preached, when the good news is preached, every man presses into it. The alcoholic presses into it. Those sexually abused will press into it. Those with tattoos are going to press into it. Those with substance abuse issues will press into it. When the good news is preached, everyone finds their place. Amen. Find out for us as Christians in the church acting as a political action committee. Woo, come on. People are over politics. People are over politics. What the world needs now is love. Yes. Sweet love. Yes. We receive love from God but can't show it. Hypocrisy. Made rituals and other things that we have done an idol. And God is saying, time out. What the world needs now is love. Sweet yes. love. Both is good. Unity and diversity. What are we going to do? We're going to re replace performance. I know you're ready to go. Romans chapter 8. Just write it down. Romans chapter 8. Verses 17 through 18. From the Passion Translation, it says this. Because we are God's true children, we qualify. Yes. Mm -hmm. Come on. Yes. Somebody say, I qualify. I qualify. Come on, say, I qualify. I qualify. Oh, get happy right there. I don't know what you're expecting from God. I don't know what your hopes are for the next generation. I don't know what your hopes are for the youth, for your children, for your grandchildren, for those that you mentor. But listen, you can stand flat-footed and know that not only do you qualify, but they qualify. Why? Because they are God's true children. I don't care what your experience has have been. I don't care what your downfalls and what your battles, both won and lost, have been. Listen, you qualify. Why? Because God loves you with an everlasting love. There is nothing that you can do to take you out of the love of God. There is not more that you can achieve to get God to love you more because you are God's true children. You qualify. That takes away this performance-based promotion, this performance-based acceptance that directly goes in conflict with the Word of God, with the will of God, and most importantly, the love of God. Yes, yes, yes. I did it this week when you see somebody say, hey, because you are God's true child, you qualify. Amen. You qualify. Sidebar, you qualify for healing. This is not in my notes. But you qualify for your broken heart to be mended. Yes. You qualify for your mind that has been closed and therefore you are causing yourself to not experience the goodness in this season. You qualify. Mm -hmm. 
I see this olive oil on, on, under this counter. I almost put some under, on, on my head before I got up here and said, you qualify. Yeah. Come on now, wake up in the morning and get into the mirror, make a sign of the cross and say, I am anointed of God. Yeah. And to experience the exceedingly and the abundantly above all that he has asked for. Thank God, I thank you that in this season, because I am your true child, and because I qualify, you are blessing me to now be a blessing to others and bridge the gap between this generation and the next generation. God, I know that I am qualified to not go out and not express and live out your love so that people will grow up so that the next generation will grow up and not know what you have done nor the works that you have done. Father, I qualify. Yeah. I qualify to preach the good news. I qualify to tell people that, listen, you shall live and not die to experience all of the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Yeah. I qualify. Now, Father, because I qualify and because the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, He has anointed me to preach the gospel and to spread this good news. God, as I go out and now, I know that love has to be the driving force so yeah. that we as Christians are not uh, labeled as hypocrites. Father, let nothing come out of my mouth before putting you at the beginning of the thought. Yes. I'm talking yes. about your tweets. I'm talking about your fax messages. I'm yes. talking about your emails as well. Right. Let nothing come out of my mouth without putting you at the beginning of the yes. thought. The world is watching. Yes. The world is watching. Yes. The world is watching. Change is difficult. Change is difficult. Don't forget about that ministry of both. Mm -hmm. Don't forget about it. Yes. Don't forget about it. People have wondered, and when I was leading this church, and I, I'm, 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 I'm probably sure I'm going to be done. When I was leading this church, and uh, we were told we had these mothers in the church. They were older, seasoned women. One of them stopped by today and just blessed my heart. Mother Pat said, I'm eight, four years old. I said, praise God. And I remember that we were told, they, they said, honor these women as mothers in the church because there were a bunch of young kids at the time and, the, and then the more seasoned, wise ones started coming. Praise the Lord of folks. Anytime I go to a church and they have, they say, oh yeah, we're just full of millennials. I say, uh-oh, oh. problem. <laughs> It needs to be diversity, evil, right? Yeah. And they said, they said, and I said, we're going to have a special service. We're going to honor them as mothers in the church. And somebody said, oh, no, no, you can't do that. That's going to mess with your brand as a cutting-edge church. Mm. Idol. Yeah. Idol. Right? I'm, I'm, uh, that? Uh, I'm sick of your fundraising schemes, your public relations yeah. and image making. People say, oh, well, Pastor Pierre, why don't you go out anymore? And why don't you post a lot more on social media? I'm sick of your fundraising schemes, your public relations and image making. Uh -huh. And they said, Pastor Pierre, you can't do this. going to mess with your brand. Mm -hmm. no. And I said, no, we've got to have both. Mm -hmm. and there's honoring there, but there's also wisdom that has been poured out to us yes. from the older ones. So we would get in there, we would sing the, uh, we would sing the contemporary songs. Mm -hmm. Some I was listening to some on the radio this morning. I said they're trying to be so cool. I can't even understand what the lyrics are. <laughs> I said I, I got to pull over the car. I got to Google it. Right. Because they're trying to be so cool, like almost like a Tony Braxton. And I'm like, wait a minute. Where are the hymns of the church? And not that one is better than the other, but we need what? Both. Oh. So we would be in there singing contemporary songs. But then we would bust out. I remember Dr. Bertie Johnson from Montclair. And yeah. One time she came into the church and she started just singing in the middle of the little message. Real, real. Jesus is real to me. Yeah. Oh, yes. Gives me the victory. Yeah. So many people doubt him. But I can't live without him. That is why I love him so. He's so real to me. Now, some of the young people have never heard that song. Yeah. They know Jesus is real. I know the Lord is real to me. Hmm. Talking about the same thing. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. There's diversity in style, but there's still unity because we're on the same place. The meeting point is the same. Every sunshine from Philadelphia said, you go your way, yeah. and I'm going to go up, <laughs> and I'll see you when we get there. She said, there's got to be another way. Mm -hmm. George and Wheezy 
Come on now. Come to a close. We are more than in the spirit. George and Weezy said we move it on up. To the east side. Mm -hmm. To a deluxe apartment. In the sky. In the sky. They said we moving on up. I don't know who it was. I don't know if it was, was it Remy Ma or was it a, a Fat Joe yeah. from New Jersey? And he said, nothing can stop me. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. I'm all the way up. All the way up. George and Weezy said we moving on up. But Fat Joe said, Nothing can stop me. I'm all the way up. The goal is what? Uh, uh, up. Mm -hmm. Diversity, but then there's what? Unity. 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 Mm -hmm. We seem to lean on me. It's right around the corner from mm -hmm. Patterson, New Jersey, Eastside, Joe Clark, Morgan Freeman. You remember when he stormed into the chorus room? And he said, who gave you permission to change our school song? And she said, well, I the kids thought it was a little boring. And he said, take a bow, Mrs. Powers. You have been written a school all the month. Right. They stood on the stage, had their arms around each other, singing what? Lean on me. When you're not strong, I'll be your friend. I'll help you to carry on. Mm -hmm. And the song came out some years ago. I don't know what it was. Corey, maybe you know, but it said lean with it. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. <laughs> with it. Rock with it. We think about dancing and moves. And there was perhaps the, I don't know if there was a dance called the Twitch or, 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 or something like that. Oh, the, the Twist. Who said that? Praise God. The, the Twist. Now, they don't have the Twist. They got the Tweet or the Twerk or whatever it's called. The Twerk. <laughs> We're not quite the same. Not quite the same. <laughs> but guess what? It's diversity. But watch this. It's still dancing. <laughs> you with it? All right. Here's my point. <laughs> the love of God is what people are after. That revivalist Maria Woodworth ever said this. It's not the art of preaching. She said sinners. It's not the art of preaching that the world is after. Mm -hmm. Dr. Wright talked about the saints, the aints. It's not the art of preaching that the aints are after. They want to know that they are in the presence of God. Yes. The presence of God, there's freedom. The presence yes. of God, there's diversity. The presence of God, there's unity. Mm -hmm. I don't have to understand you. I, I'm not going to expect you to react to my experience the same way that I did. Mm -hmm. You may have an experience with God, but I don't expect you to react to your experience the same way I reacted to my experience with God. I'm just going to love you. That's what unifies us. I'm not going to receive the love of God, talk about the love of God, and then go out and make things bigger than the love of God. Mm -hmm. I said, I'm tired of the religious peace. Yeah. Yeah. It's the main thing. The, the main, main thing. thing. What is the main thing? More relevant means to focus on the matter at hand. Yeah. For the matter at hand is Jesus Christ. And the matter at hand for Jesus Christ was always and still is love. Remember the ministry of both. Yes. Diversity and unity. Unity is where we'll experience the victory. And then make sure we create action plans to sustain them both. Let's pray. Father, we thank you today. We thank you for your spirit. We thank you for your word. May your word be written on the tablets of our heart and tied around our neck. As we look at the state of the world, Father, we it doesn't need rocket science. It doesn't take some great revelation for us to see that things are happening. God, every time there is a thunderstorm in New Jersey, there's also a tornado. Things are happening. Wildfires and hate and division. But God, give us the ability to recognize that we are your true children. And we qualify for all that Jesus is, all that he has. All that he is is love. All that he has is love. Give us the ability to not only show love to others, but receive your love and show it to ourselves. That we are qualified for the peace of God that rules in our hearts continually as the umpire. Father God, we qualify for your spirit to sit on us like it did on the day of Pentecost. We qualify 
that you have not left us comfortless in this time of division, in this time of really needing and wanting to bridge the gap. But we've got an advocate, we've got a comforter, which is the Holy Spirit. God, thank you for diversity. Thank you for unity. Thank you for the action plans, the combat manuals to put in place so that we can achieve the goals that you have placed on our heart as the mission and the continuation of the work of the example of Jesus the Christ. In Jesus' name. That is the word of God for the people of God. Amen. Amen. The love of God, we have heard the word preached. Amen. There's an old song of the church that says, There's room at the cross for you. There's room at the cross for you. It doesn't matter what your issues are, it doesn't matter what your foibles, your your proclivities, your 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 oh my gosh, nobody knows. It doesn't matter. There's room at God's cross for you. What does that mean? It means that the same thing that the preacher preached is what Jesus says to you. For God so loved the world, all of the world, that God gave God's only begotten Son, that whosoever, any and every body, body and everybody, believes in him in Jesus shall not perish but will have everlasting life but you don't know what I've done you don't know who I am you don't know what those people say about me guess what it doesn't matter because the scripture goes on to say for God sent not God's son into the world to condemn the world but that the world through Jesus might be saved so I end the same way I began, that there is room at the cross for you. If you're here today under the sound of my voice, if you're hearing it in real time or you're hearing it a little bit later, and you've been wondering, can God love me? Does God accept me? Because I've been put out of some churches and they said I didn't qualify. So are you really saying that they made a mistake, that they lied, that they were not informed? I am. Because God does love you. You are welcome. Not in spite of. God simply loves. God does not give a qualifier that I love the sinner but I hate the sin. No, God says, I love you. That's what God says. God does not qualify God's love for us and I don't know why we're putting qualifiers on it either. So today I invite you that if you've been struggling, if you've been wondering, the only thing that you need to know is that God loves you and welcomes you. God loves you so much that God gave God's most precious gift, which was God's son. And Jesus loves you so much because Jesus had choices. Jesus says, but I will go. Build me a body that I can come down. And he did. He loves us so much that even though he's now back at the right hand of God, the Father, seated and making intercessions for us, he did not leave us alone. He sent the Holy Spirit in the Greek that says the paraclete who comes alongside us to help us. And the, and the Holy Spirit, being one with agency, also said, and I will go. Because that's how much God the entirety of the Godhead, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, loves all of you. And God invites you to come and to receive the gift that God has given, the gift of my grace and my love for you. Is there room for people like me? I promise you there is, because there's room for people like me too. Like, oh, but Reverend, you got it together. Why did you tell? I do not. <laughs> I present well. I don't have it all together. I don't. 
I don't. And I'm not gonna give you an example of, of the stuff that I struggle with. Oh, is it my hair tongue? Is it, mm, it doesn't matter. What matters is that God loves me and made room for me. God makes room for me. So today, if you're under the sound of my voice, whether in here and physically, whether you're on the call-in line, whether you're on our Facebook feed worshiping with us, no matter where you are, I invite you to accept the love of God. Reverend, what does it mean? It simply means this. I'm going to go old school and tell you about the sinner's prayer. What is the sinner's prayer? It simply means this. God, I believe that you love me. I want to walk in that love. I want you to lead me and guide me. And I want to be assured of that even when I mess up. So Lord, I want you to, as I say, come into my heart. But what does that really mean? I want to be in relationship with you. I want you to teach me how to live, how to love. For as much as I felt like I have been judged, I sometimes have judged others too. So help me to love like you love, to live as you called me to live. And thank you for your forgiveness when I get it wrong. Thank you for your grace. That's what it means. Forgive all the pithy things that I tell you, the A's, the B's, and the C's. That's just a way of remembering it. You need to know that God loves you and welcomes you. And by extension, I love you and welcome you. Trinity, amen Trinity, loves you and welcomes you. Do I have to dress a certain way? No, you don't. You don't. And I wasn't proving a point because it's just hot. So I brought me in all my arms today. Come however you are because God does love you. And there's room for you kingdom of God, in this house of God, you are welcome. Is there one who would like to respond to that invitation, to take God at God's word, and to be in relationship with God, to take God at God's word, and to become a member of the Trinity Church family, two separate invitations. Amen. Amen. Well, beloved, you are loved by God. And I invite you to stand today as we share in our Apostles' Creed. Amen? Ooh. Our Apostles' Creed can be found on page 14 of the blue hymnal that is in front of you. Um, in the blue Presbyterian hymnal on page 14. Hmm. Um, we're reading the traditional one.
the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Beloved, you are loved. And we are inviting now uh, Pastor Peter to come back and to give us our benediction and um, continue on with our day and our celebration. Is there any? Yes, ma'am. Yes. There is um, um, coffee hour downstairs, and so we invite you to join us um, in McGee Hall. Um, for those of you who don't know, that's our basement. It is called McGee Hall after our former, um, one of our former pastors. And so we thank God for you. So if you could, um, in giving a benediction, pray over um, um, our refreshments, things that have been prepared for us. Amen. Well, amen. amen. It's a good day, isn't it? It's a good day. Well, since we talked about kind of uh, breaking some of, of our own routines, I'm going to break mine. I'm going to give you a different kind of benediction. Amen. 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 Lift up your hands. Come on, say the food is blessed. The food is blessed. The refreshments are blessed. The refreshments are blessed. Let it be nourishment to our bodies. Let it be nourishment to our bodies. Father, we decree and declare today as we leave. Father, we, we know that we are blessed in the city and that we are blessed in the field. Yes. That we are blessed in our coming and we are blessed in our going. All our needs are met. Mm -hmm. Father, we walk in divine help. God, we declare and decree right now that this will be the best week yes. of our lives. Yes. Father, we thank you this week for divine elevation, divine promotion, and godly surprises. Yes. Father, we decree it, we declare it, we make it our decision. And we will see the light shine as we leave this place, but never your presence. Father, may we remain as people of the presence. May our minds be open and alert to receive. Our hearts be open and alert to receive all that you have for us this week. We thank you for our time together. Give us traveling mercies and we thank you for your angels. That you have given marching orders to protect us in all of our righteous ways. We believe it. It is done. You are good and you are good forever. Everyone who agrees with that, say amen. 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 amen.